The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore, along with 11 other agencies, are looking to harness and integrate geospatial data for more efficient management of port, marine and coastal planning. Called Geospace C, the first phase is expected to commence in the third quarter of this year. For a start, the database will be populated with hydrographic and marine environment data. Upon its completion, user agencies will get access to a central repository of authorized marine and coast, coastal geospatial data, including viewing the seabed in three dimensions. For more, we're joined by the Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore's advisor on hydro, hydrography, Dr. Parry Wee. Parry, thanks so much for coming in. Nice to be here. Uh, firstly, help us understand better than how this integrated system will work. Well, the challenge is that there are multiple users port waters, you have aquaculture, you have biodiversity conservation, even recreational as well. Mm. So that's a need for an integrated uh, database on a single platform. So previously, all this information resides in individual uh, agencies. So there were challenges. Mm. One, what data is there? Second is accessibility. And third is also format. So if Joe Space C, it's an interesting initiative by the agencies and it's a whole of government approach in which we decided that we should not only contribute, share, but harmonize data. Mm. So the information which we use then can actually be used for um, decision making and to ensure that you know, there's proper marine spatial planning. Mm. So this is used for uh, there's different agencies with diverse interests. Yeah, you can certainly see sort of how this could benefit. So what was the tipping point? What was the, what was the point that, pe that the decision was made, this is something that we have to do, something we have to invest in? Uh, there was a need for a central depository. And there was a need for, to ensure that the data is an open standard. Mm -hmm. And with the open standard, then in the one single platform, the agencies can then use it for the marine spatial planning. Like I said earlier, mm. is there's diverse interests. And the marine information is vast. It just not only covers the sea bits, the topography, but also the water column as well. Yeah, so tell us then, what kind of practical benefits uh, will this bring to, to all the different users? If you look at the uh, conventional hydrographic information, it's three-dimensional mm. in terms of you have uh, let long and you have the depth. Mm. What is interesting now is that latitude and longitude, latitude and longitude, and you have also the depth. Mm. But what is interesting is that because of the historical data which we have, mm. it gives us a fourth dimension of time. Mm. It's a time series in which you can look at, mm -hmm. because as you see, the sea is dynamic, and ocean currents. If you look at it, it's a, like a giant conveyor belt that uh, sweeps across the oceans. And I mean, a good example, for example, this would be, you know, the, you remember the Fukushima tsunami? Mm, yes, 2000. There was floating marine debris that crossed the Pacific from Japan to the west coast of North America. Mm. And this floating debris took about three years to cross the entire Pacific Ocean. Mm. If you look at Singapore's waters, it is important because Dynamics in terms of seaweed topography changes as well. Mm. And we may be small, but is it important because the seaweed changes and we need to man monitor it. And one of the reasons why we, the Port of Singapore is a, uh, monitoring is because of navigational safety. Okay, and you've been involved with the Singapore Port Authority since 1982. Uh, you must be, are you welcoming sort of the levels of technology that, I mean, it must... It, it must have changed so much in your time there, but this must be the most exciting time, I would imagine, because now we have the technology that can help us with all this information. Yeah, yeah it's been a really a long journey. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I think, 30 years of long journey in, in a sense that we move from analog to mm. digital. So I think one of the main benefits or beneficiaries of this uh, going to digital electronic charting has been the shipping community, mm. the mariners. In the past, they used to plot their position on charts. And it's plotting the position which they have passed. Mm. Now with electronic charting, with global positioning system, they not only know where they are in real time, they can predict where they are going, and it's an all-weather system. Okay, so in terms for hydrography, we have also seen a transformation. 
um, or the hydrographers we have seen from from Sexton to global positioning, satellite-based positioning system. Mm. We have seen, like I said earlier, with the uh, nautical cartographers uh, from paper charts to electronic charts. So it has been quite a quite a challenge in all this these years. And this is this must be this next step of geospace. The sea taking uh, Singapore to the next step. There's so much competition in in terms of the sea space. Uh, this must be something that you must welcome as as something that can keep Singapore sort of at the forefront. Mm. Definitely, it's like I said, it's important that Singapore. There's a need for a balance. Mm. Okay, in the sense that what we need to achieve is not only in terms of navigation navigational safety, but also I think that there's a there's a possibility, in my personal hope, that Singapore could be actually a show, a showcase for the world. Yes, we hope yes. so too. Thank you, Perry. Yep. We have to leave that there. I have so many more questions for you. Dr. Perry, we Maritime and Port Authority uh, of Singapore's advisor on hydrography.